A multi-million dollar pump and dump scheme involving penny stocks. Were swindled out of over $120 million. Of a worthless penny stock. The scheme cost investors ultimately more than $200 million in losses. Perfect Wolf of Wall Street, stop. Outside of the mainstream stock exchanges, there exists a lesser known marketplace. I see a lot of investors that are thinking, I'm gonna get in on this early and make a ton of money. A marketplace where a lot of penny stocks are traded that may lure in unsuspecting investors looking for wealth on Wall Street. A penny stock is a speculative high-risk investment. This is like 1999 again with the, the promoters and the message boards and they couldn't make it. I'm getting a lot of calls from investors who are getting scammed by penny stock operators. Authorities have busted massive penny stock scams. And I have to say, I learned all the dirty tricks of Wall Street from representing those folks. Markets where penny stocks thrive saw fairly steady increases of trading activity, but that activity spiked in 2021. It all kind of comes together as the perfect storm of opportunity for criminal enterprises. When you see a stock up 26,000% in the past month, you say, who's buying this garbage? At the end of the day, when you're buying something in the stock market, someone else is selling it. So you have to think about who might be the other person on the other side of the train. Here's how these ultra low price stocks inspired a new breed of investors. High stakes gamblers, risk taking fraudsters and enforcement crackdowns. The stock market is like a superstore, with people buying and selling ownership in companies. Well-established marketplaces like the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ have the stocks of well-known companies like Apple or Alphabet. Generally, buying those stocks gets you a share of a stable, well-established business at a modest to high cost per share. But penny stocks trade over here, in the over-the-counter markets. Companies trading in the multi-tiered OTC markets are often lower priced, like the pink sheets tier, where a lot of penny stocks are traded. The pink sheets uh, or the gray markets versus something that's potentially on NASDAQ. And then from that standpoint, if you also look at the, the price, that's usually a pretty good indicator. Nowadays, these shares don't just cost a penny. The Securities and Exchange Commission defines it as stocks priced below $5. For the most part, over-the-counter markets trade smaller companies and startups because alternative markets have a less expensive listing process with less stringent requirements. This gives smaller companies flexibility while still being able to access opportunity to raise capital. There is registration with the SEC for certain types of over-the-counter uh, issuers. Depending on where they're traded, there is no registration requirement. In some cases, there's very limited disclosure requirement. The problem is with these penny stocks, you get very little financial information. You don't really learn much about the earnings, the balance sheet of the companies, or even the background of the people that are promoting the companies. This differs from stocks that trade on exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. In a normal stock, you can check financials, check the research that is done by analysts, if companies are audited so you can check those reports. Sometimes the end goal for companies listing over the counter is to eventually grow into larger exchanges. Generally speaking, it's good to have a market for securities so people invest in promising technologies. It might be a good thing to give people the option to participate in exciting new stories. There is nothing inherently wrong with low price stocks but they are stocks that experience higher volatility and lower liquidity. For example, if you buy a penny stock and then you decide you want to sell it, it could be more difficult for you to find a buyer for the stock. There may be no buyers at, at a particular time, or if there are, there could be a big spread as we call it. Someone would buy the stock at a dollar and they would sell it to you at $3. So there's this big spread, which do doesn't exist on the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. This lack of transparency makes it easier for fraudsters to manipulate information and misrepresent a company's financials. Certain statements or claims could be made that are not readily verifiable or, or easily investigated or tracked. Combine that with unscrupulous stock promoters making exaggerated claims about a stock. It's not very clear who is on the other side of the sell speech here. Usually there's a sell speech, someone who's very slick, think 
Neil DiCaprio, but not necessarily. I'm a securities lawyer with my firm, Zemansky LLC, and we represent investors who were abused and harmed by Wall Street firms. I learned this business of penny stocks from being the, the attorney for Jordan Belfort and the company Stratton Oakmont. I was a scammer, I was. The first to admit, I understand the seedy underbelly. Jordan Belfort, AKA the Wolf of Wall Street. Really was a character as Leonardo DiCaprio portrays him in the movie, The Wolf of Wall Street. Benchmark for future business. Jordan Belfort orchestrated one of the most notorious penny stock scams in history through his brokerage firm, Stratton Oakmont. Are you allowed to trade any stocks or talk about I'm stocks? allowed, but you know, it's like- Innocent hey. investors bought into Belfort's sales pitch which artificially pumped up stock valuations. Many times, these people band together to defraud the public. And what one of the things that they do is they trade among each other to create the impression that all of a sudden there's a lot of trading. And sometimes they manage to fool people into thinking, well, this is a company that is really attracting investors. Belfort and his team did not respond to CNBC's request for his participation in this story. I think everyone deserves a second chance, you know? Yeah. What I didn't know, and which the SEC, the Security Exchange Commission, later found out, is that they had their own positions in these stocks. They would sell out at the high prices, and the customers would, would be left holding the bag. Stratton uh, was put out of business. Eventually, the scam collapsed. If you've seen the film, you know he served nearly two years in prison for securities fraud and money laundering. I always say most of my firm was legitimate, but there was a portion of my firm that wasn't. It's just one example of penny stock fraud. There are many more. The COVID crisis was a prime example. Speculative trading related to potential medical solutions or pandemic-related products, right? So it's a great catalyzer to push dubious companies that all of a sudden were part of the solution, providing hand sanitizers, protective equipment, home tests, you name it. Because there might be an interest to basically twist uh, the business model of a particular company that is not doing very well to make it more exciting uh, for the rest of us and to play uh, to, to FOMO, the fear of messing up. 2021 saw major trading activity in over-the-counter equity markets. That's when retail investors joined forces online and unleashed unprecedented waves of enthusiasm for these traditionally overlooked stocks. Penny stocks are the newest frontier in this recent retail trading boom. It's a, a kind of a new in investor behavior of, of using a self-directed account versus a traditional leveraging of a registered investment advisor. I think there's been an increase of social media will promote or discuss certain types of OTC stock. Heightened OTC market trading raised concerns about market manipulation in penny stocks. There's some benefit to the public. You have small companies that have access to the public markets, and, and once in a while they're good companies and they end up in a good place. But I would say right now there's there's widespread fraud, and, and investors need to be careful when they're buying on these apps. The SEC closely monitored the meme stock action, issuing warnings and risks along the way. This is especially important as more and more investors enter the market. Although OTC equity trading has come down since the 2021 peak, investors are still putting their pennies into speculative penny stocks. Or we did recently a survey at the CFA Institute with, with FINRA studying uh, Gen Z investors. We discovered that they have a greater propensity to risk. They love risk. On the other hand, that risk can be sometimes confused into, into gambling. We also unfortunately saw that people who tended to invest more had more propensity to, to gamble online. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission oversees the securities markets, enforcing regulations like the penny stock rule to protect investors. This rule imposes additional requirements on brokers and dealers trading penny stocks, including a mandated penny stock disclosure document, outlining potential risks, and a broker's commitment to protecting their clients' interests and financials. The SEC works alongside enforcement agencies, including the Department of Justice, the FBI, and the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority to investigate conflicts of interest. The SEC in the last couple of years has been a lot harsher on the penalties you want not only to punish misbehavior and to recoup money for investors, but also to 
just make it very expensive for people to engage in this type of fraud. I think with the evolution of the space, we, we have the rules necessary to investigate and bring charges in this area. It's, we combine again, our intelligence from, from our member firms, from the market data, as well as investors. We're really looking to make the industry safer and protect all investors. We have a tip line uh, at, at www.finra.org where investors can file tips, individuals. So I'd say that the general guidelines for investors is, is really investigate. And if I said three things, it would be investigate, investigate, investigate. Investors can protect themselves from scams by looking out for red flags. Take a look at the pitch and the person who's making the pitch or the organization that is making the pitch. Many times, they're not even registered broker dealers. If you went to BrokerCheck, that's available through FINRA.org. You can look at BrokerCheck for your broker to see what their, what their history is, how long they've been registered, and if there are any substantial complaints or findings against them. Take a look at the company itself that is being presented as a hot opportunity. So what do you know about the company? Have you heard about it before? Can you research it on the internet? Beware sudden changes in these companies. The sudden changes are my favorite. The sudden changes are when companies change the speaker symbol or their business model and to benefit with the latest trend. The, the message for investors is they have to do due diligence. They have to understand who these people are. So I think investor education is the key. So a lot of it is personal responsibility, but people have to do their own homework.